I did a previous video about how my mechanic I thought might be trying to kill me because of the wheel bearing situation that we had. And I have to say I did something stupid. I'm not going to be someone who hides the dumb things he does in order to, uh, you know, make myself look good. And uh, I was dumb on this because what happened was I put the thing back together. I thought with the pro torque nut, there was a pro torque nut and not the normal two nuts that, that came on this originally. But the pro torque nut is a single nut. And I thought he just didn't know what he was doing. He didn't know how to torque it. He didn't know how to back it off correctly. And so it was really loose and blew out the wheel seals. And uh, I fixed that, put it back together, and I went to get it aligned. And by the time I got to the alignment place, which was 12 miles, that baby had blown out again. Both of the, uh, mainly the passenger side really blew out. It still wasn't near as loose after 12 miles. It was not near as loose uh, as it was when I drove just a couple miles after the mechanic did it. But it was still, it had a little bit of a, just a slight, slightly loose, but the wheel still was completely burned out. Came back home. I cried and cried and cried. No, I didn't cry. But what I did is I decided to take it apart and see what the heck is going on. And so I took out the bearings again. And this time I did it the correct way by seeing, does this bearing fit the spindle? Here's what I found. The inner bearing that he put on here is HM. 212049. This is common on like all the trucks now. Look at this. Woohoo! Yeah. Yeah. That that's gonna blow out wheel seals. So I've got the wrong bearing. What's kind of baffling though is I found the old bearing in my junk pile, and it's HM212047, which is the correct bearing. I don't know how you take the bearings in and get the wrong ones, but maybe he just said, you know, give me the normal bearing. I forgot it at home. Just give me one. And that's what happened. But it was dumb on my part. I should have checked everything. So now I have to take it all the way apart and do this again and buy new bearings because these are the wrong ones. There's a guy named Bill Ship. Ship uh, Trucks, I think it is, up in uh, Ridgeland. I think that's where he's at. But he's a really smart guy. And he said he's big in the front ends and stuff. And uh, I talked to him for a little bit. He said that this has actually happened to him before. He knew the serial numbers off the top of his head. This is how good he is. So he said he had a mechanic. He was a really good mechanic. Had a couple seals blown out. Brought the truck in. He just changed the seals and put it back together without checking. And a mechanic had done the same thing on that truck put the wrong bearings on and it was doing this so it happens to other people if your wheel seals go bad always take the bearings out put it on the spindle and make sure you have a good fit i hope that will save you from being an idiot like me but if not hey join the dumb club here is the new one it's the correct one this is hm212047 this is the correct fit, so we're going to put it back together. Now, because it is a little bit older, Bill had even mentioned this to me to do as well. I've seen an old trick, uh, a farmer's trick, where they take a punch and then knock oh, a little bit in each journal. Because what you don't want is you don't want this uh, bottom cone, the inner cone, to spin around. You want it to sit snug. And to make sure it sits snug, take an old punch, or new punch, on your old spindle, and just make a little mark. I put new races inside this hub because I was just concerned that the old races were going to have problems. And one of the things you do to get the old races out, really works good, is you, you just weld a bead all the way around the race. And uh, it just pops right out. Just be careful not to weld, you know, too close to the edges where you end up hitting the hub itself. You know, you got to kind of pay attention. You know, just don't jerk around because it doesn't matter. The weld bead doesn't really matter.
oil. When you go to torque it back down, you want everything to slip right in. Okay. Beautiful. I did go with a different seal. I went with this uh, Scott seal. You're supposed to be able to press this seal in with your hands. I got these on Amazon for 44 bucks. Kind of press it in. Now it's ready to be installed. All right, I got my hub here, and we're going to go ahead and see if we can get all this to go on nice, easy, and smooth. Come on now. Okay, what I don't want to do, this is according to Stemco, I don't want to spin this hub until I seat the, I don't want to spin this hub until I seat the wheel seal. Okay, so the wheel seal is going to push onto that inner shaft, inner lip. And once that happens, then you can spin it. That's at 200 foot pounds. We're set at 200 foot pounds. Okay. Now we can spin it. Now we want to back off this nut one full rotation. So that's half. One full rotation. We're going to set our torque wrench back to 100. This is just for the Pro Torque nut. If you have a two nut system, not the same. Now I've lined up this hole with this raised flat mark so I can take this flat mark and move it to here. I know I need to go right to where this bolt hole is. I'm going to grab it with my finger here. I will test this out after I put the tire back on so I can get some real leverage on it to make sure that this uh, ba these bearings are within spec. But keep in mind, I had the wrong bearing on the inner bearing. And on this particular wheel, it still didn't leak and it was still within spec. It did not come loose, even though there was a wrong bearing on it. So that's not all you have to do. That's why it's so important to go ahead and do that because I wouldn't have found it till later on. Maybe if I went like 200 miles or something crazy and maybe destroyed that spindle. All right, all right, all right. I think we're getting somewhere now. We got the tire back on. We got the tires on both sides back on. And we've got oil inside the hub, so she's all ready to go. And I haven't test driven it yet. I'm going to test drive it um, a good amount before I take it in for another alignment. So not embarrassed my butt out of there again. But uh, I also made a mud flap. This 362 didn't come with mud flaps. I mean, I I don't understand why you wouldn't put a mud flap on there, but I guess they didn't figure people wanted to keep stuff nice. I don't know, but I made one out of uh, some angle iron, uh, and I shot it up on the step, and then cut down the mud flap just a little bit. So hopefully this helps out, not sending rocks and mud and everything all over your stuff. Look at look at the steps. Just covered in mud and dirt. Went 12 miles and it was just covered. Well, it's going to be a scorcher today in South Mississippi, but we've got to get this thing ready for an alignment. I got sunscreen on, I've got a hat on, and so I'm ready to go. 
I did see a video the other day. Some stupid contractor was saying how all these guys were wussies for wanting to wear sunscreen and a hat. Come on, guys. You're supposed to be out there working like men. And I was like, uh, I used to kind of think that way too. But all these old guys, tough as nails old guys. I'm talking about real men. They would tell me, where's your hat? Where's your sunscreen? Where's your hat? Where's your sunscreen? They'd, that's, they'd always bug me about it. And finally, they're sh showing me all the stuff cut out of their faces from uh, not wearing a hat, not wearing sunscreen. All these years they worked outside. I said, okay, I'm going to listen to old guys. So when I went to Southern Tire to get my alignment, there's a guy named Kingpin Rick. He's like 63 years old. He does all the alignments. In fact, he's the only one that can do the alignments. And really, there's really nowhere else to go around here other than Southern Tire to get an alignment. There's just not a lot of options. Well, he always tries to find reasons not to do an alignment. He's not like eager for business. So he goes around and sees I put new bushings in everywhere. And he goes, I'm not, I can't do the alignment if you didn't change the housing. He's like, change the housing? What are you talking about? He's like, if I break one of them bolts, it ain't going anywhere. I had checked a couple of these. I had checked these two bolts right here, make sure they came out nice. Checked this vertical one before I went in because I didn't want them to, you know, wrench on something and destroy my tanks and, and my paint and everything. So I was trying to make sure it was good to go, and, and those were good to go. But the rest of them, no, no, the rest of them were not ready to go. So Kingpin Rick was right. And here's one of the housings from the other side. Check that vertical. Check these out. This one broke clean off, and uh, this one right here, uh, it was not going anywhere. You're more likely to get a bag of crack cocaine out of Hunter Biden's hands than you are to get that bolt out of that housing. <laughs> uh, I tried to pound it out, heat it out, drill it out of a different one. Didn't work. These are only 38 bucks a piece, but I didn't want to wait for the parts to come in. I learned my lesson. We're going to go ahead and take care of these housings. And I'm going to be back to see Kingpin Rick, and he's going to get my llama done. All right, we've had an eventful day so far. I'm on my third shirt. Third shirt today. I tried to do a little recording earlier, but it was so hot that the, the camera was actually burning up. And then I've had to deal with uh, the police needing to find a thief who stole from them. Uh, so stole batteries in the middle of the day. It's crazy. But Ned Stevens is going to help him find out who did this. We're going to bring him to justice. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead. And I did the other one. Now I'm going to get this, uh, this off of here. And of course, this is the easy one. Never broke it loose. I've got two different ways of shims. There's a set of shims behind it, so I have to remember. I'm just going to put it the way it was, and they can uh, align it the way it needs to be done when I take it in. I'm not going to try to set it back to normal. All right. Somebody must have changed this bolt out. That was too easy. Okay. And you can see why I got a little confused. Now the U-bolts, I got to cut them off. I'm going to put on these goggles. I'm going to tell you something very important. Uh, I wear a pair of safety glasses last year. I was grinding on something very, very, very minimal. And a piece of metal went right into my eye underneath the safety glasses. And, oh, that that was not fun. I had to go to the eye doctor and he had to pull it out. These are the inside shims. We'll put them over here. There we go. 
bolts toast. Now it's just a matter of getting this bushing out of here. Well, this one looks pretty new. Didn't damage it at all. But if something goes bad, ooh, it's still hot. If something goes bad, I'll have that later. Here's my new one. I already painted it up. Putting anti seize on everything because I am going to have, you know, all these bolts are going to come out probably for the alignment. So I want to make sure that nothing gets seized up in there. I'll torque it down to specs, which I think on the front it's 200, vertical 200, and these need to be at least 90. Put the saddle in. Come on in there, you bolt. There you go. That's a good girl. I'm glad I put all this stuff on there about 20 miles ago. Because <laughs> uh, otherwise I, I, I imagine that it would have been kind of stuck in there. 20 very bumpy miles that is since the uh, bearings were not correct on the front tires perfect this main bushing here says uh, I think it says 500 foot pounds so you can go to town on it make sure that's going in right it's beautiful. So all I'm going to do now is torque the rest of these down. 200, 200. Make sure the bushing here is, is 500 and then just a nice 90 uh, to 100 probably on this U-bolt. And then uh, that way when I go in for an alignment, they will be able to go ahead and put this thing together the way it needs to be and be done with it. So that's how simple it is. We'll put the tires back on after we do that. We'll hit it with some paint. Um, actually, I'll probably put some paint on it before I put the tires on. That's what we're going to go ahead and do and get this done and we'll be set for our alignment. I'm so excited. Oh baby, made it through this hot scorcher, got the tires back on, got the quarter fenders back on. Everything's ready to go. So here's what the finished product looks like. New bolts, new housings on every wheel. So that's great. Bearings are good on the front now, I think. So we're ready for an alignment. I'm really excited about it. I'm burning up. It's time for me to go get some water. Thank you all for watching. Appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.